Hi, welcome to another edition of BB Flicks. Uh, we are your friendly BB librarians here to talk about our, like what we watch, tend to watch in the winter and the colder months, sort of less what we've been watching and more kind of what we will be watching and what we recommend for you guys to be watching. Um, I am speaking to you from the lovely land of Hobbiton, which is also where my most like cherished winter rewatch lives, which is Lord of the Rings. Uh, extended editions only, really. Yes, of course. Yeah, right? And I, I tend to watch them every winter, set aside like a weekend and just watch all the way through. Uh, sometimes with people, sometimes by myself. I think it's such a wonderful, like a whole day entertainment. There's a nice little break in the middle if you're watching on the DVDs. <laughs> because it has to be on you. <laughs> and if you really want to go crazy, you can always, uh, you know, go into the various special features, which would provide you a whole nother, like, month of entertainment. Yeah. 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 Full on. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I think it became such a winter thing because they came out in the winter, and every year when they were coming out, my, um, my parents bought them for me for Christmas, and we would watch them that day. So that, that's mm -hmm. sort of where it became... Uh, and I just, I love Lord of the Rings. I know that we probably have some other fans here. I believe someone has been to Hobbiton. <laughs> I have. I have been to Bridget's background. Um, I was working on a cruise ship as a librarian back as my first li librarian job. And I was doing cruises down in New Zealand. And we organized a crew trip to Hobbiton. And it was freaking amazing. So yeah, I'm just, if, if I like look like I'm zoning out, I'm just staring at, at Bridget's background, Bridget's just background. being like, oh, I wish I was back there. Cause it was, it would have been, we would have gone pro probably in the winter. Cause it's of course their summer down there. And mm -hmm. so we were down there in what was our winter. I, I got on that ship January 4th. Um, so it was sometime that, that winter, maybe early spring, our early spring, their fall that I would have gone too. So I'm jealous. <laughs> Me too. I'd love to go to New Zealand. So what, what is it that makes them like comfort TV for you though? Like I think fantasy and sci-fi are often that way, but what what is it specifically that makes you feel like it's the cozy winter stuff? And it's funny because I was looking for a background and I was like, there isn't any that is in winter. So it's like not mm -hmm. ever in winter in the thing. So why it feels that way. I think it is because of when I first watched them. And I have a deep connection to them from childhood because my mom used to, my, my mom used to read to me every night when I was little. So just a, a, a I feel like that's how you become a librarian in one way is like to have mm -hmm. a mother who reads a chapter of a book to mm -hmm. you every night. And we read The Hobbit when I was younger. And that, so that has a very like deep memory of reading The Hobbit. And then we also read the first Lord of the Rings. I read the rest of them on my own, but we read Fellowship of the Ring together. And it just gives me such a like warm childhood feeling. And that, and that really is. And I think that that's sort of why, how does any of this happen is they mm -hmm. are deeply connected to my family. And yeah. uh, it is because it, I feel like Lord of the Rings in particular, like it is a story about a very like difficult struggle and, and it ends happily, but it doesn't end without sadness. It's, it can combine both. And I, when I read it as a kid, it was very like, oh, you can have like a big fantasy narrative and it isn't just like happily ever after. It's like people are changed and, and hurt by things that happen, that, but that doesn't mean the ending isn't happy. It just means that it's realistic and it feels yeah. real. And I have been thinking particularly now, I feel like we are sort of in a time of struggle. A lot of us are, are struggling through this, that we will get through this. It's just, it is hard. And like hard things are worth it sometimes. I Honestly. remember reading The Hobbit when I was, um, I mean, I read the whole mess when I was a kid, like, like you did, um, start to finish probably two or three times. And I think it was maybe in ninth grade, um, the English department had us actually read it as an assignment and I was horrified because it's like how how dare you ruin one of my favorite books by <laughs> making me have to read it in school and write papers about it because yeah it was very upsetting because I had already my whole childhood was already built around them 
I didn't, I didn't need it at that point. Yeah, it's not, you don't need to, don't need to, don't, don't ruin wonderful things by making us talk about <laughs> themes. <laughs> so, okay, I have to ask though, do you have a preferred snack for watching this? Ooh. Oh, preferred snack. I don't have a preferred snack. I, I've gotten really into making popcorn um, lately. So I guess I just make popcorn on my my I mean, honestly, they take so long. I'm assuming you probably eat actual meals while you're right. Too. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. You, you could grow things while you're going on. You, you, could, pre- so you could prepare a like a nine course meal yeah. while you're doing it. Well, it's on in the background. Yeah. So, so that, that... I, I was just going to say, I, you could probably tell from my background, I, I often retreat into sci-fi um, and like Doctor Who. Um, particularly since they have Christmas episodes and it's, it's great to watch like Christmas sci-fi. It's just kind of funny. Um, but I started watching um, an old series from the nineties called Babylon five. that Like me and my friends were all totally into at the time. And I have all the DVDs and I haven't watched them in years. And I realized they're streaming. So I, I watched the very first episode last night and there is a scene where one of the characters, uh, one of the characters who is human, is watching um, like Warner Brothers cartoons, which in the 24th century apparently still exist, and he he likes them. Um, and he has one of the main alien characters. He invites her over to watch the cartoons, and she's eating popcorn. And of course, you know she's a, a typical like sci-fi alien with a weird head and stuff like that. And she's trying to eat the popcorn and like look at it like because she totally doesn't understand this idea of sitting down and watching some enjoyable thing and eating a, an appropriate snack that goes with it. It's just a completely alien concept to her. Yeah. But yeah, that's my that's my main like winter love is Lord of the Rings. Uh, does anyone else have like a, a, a similar sort of epic or scope that they're that they watch in the winter or um, I mean, nothing really quite hits the same level of like epic that those that trilogy of movies does just because there's so long and there's so much and yet there's still just the trilogy, which is nice. It mm-hmm. wasn't like, let's make 35 movies and stretch them out over 100 years. Um, I mean, I, I mean, this is kind of all the time, but especially in the winter, you know, when I'm in when I'm in more on a, in a normal year. Um, I definitely usually do a, a full rewatch of all the Star Wars movies at some point. Maybe not like all right in a row, um, but there, and it's not even has any, like it, there's no real connection with like the fact that like Empire Strikes Back is half on like a ice planet or ice anything. Planet, yeah. um, it's, I think it's literally just that <clears throat> they were always kind of for the same reason that you go for Lord of the Rings. They were like always, we always like had them on VHS or something, like especially the original, tri- you know, obviously the original trilogy when I was little, we didn't have all the rest of them. Um, <laughs> and so they were kind of our go-to because we basically had like those in Disney and that was like all we had on VHS at the time. Um, and so um, it was just like, if you wanted to watch a movie and you were just sitting at home, like your choices were a Disney classic or star wars and so if you didn't want disney like Mm. then one of the star wars movies um and like now there's so many more so it takes way more way more nights to do it which is which is great (laughs) um so yeah i I definitely rewatch the um the the star wars movies um in the winter but i also this year i think i would really like to do a rewatch of the show leverage um because there is a reboot coming um at some point it's been delayed because everything's been delayed um but i was also they have um at least one really good christmas episode um and also i was reading a thing the other day about the final episode of the series um which i still maintain was one of the best written episodes of television like ever um and now I, re- I now I just really really want to rewatch it, but I'm like I can't rewatch just the last one. Mm. So there's like five seasons to do first. That I'm like this seems like a great idea. Um, so I yeah I'm really I'm really thinking I'm gonna gonna rewatch um, Leverage. And again, it's it's not even necessarily that it's like a winter like tradition, but like it's it's a good time to like hunker down and just turn on something in the background while you're doing other stuff. 
after, after agrees. <laughs> um, and, you know, just, you know, watch something that, you know, you really, really enjoyed. And I haven't seen some of the episodes practically since they aired. So it would be fun to, um, that was actually the, it, it actually was kind of fun because the first time, so I, I live with two roommates, both of whom I met many, many years ago, originally online. And the two of them met each other when the three of us all, before any of us lived together, did a watch of Leverage together. Like we all watched it in our house, but at the same, you know, in our houses, but at the same time. And like AOL Insta Messenger was still a thing. So we'd like group chat on AOL Insta Messenger and as things were happening and talk. So it was like before like all the Netflix party and all that stuff, this was our version of doing that. So like the two of them originally got to know each other because of leverage which was pretty cool yeah that's nice that's awesome yeah i also have been rewatching some christmas episodes i I feel like i'm talking a lot but i've been watching the bob's burgers christmas episodes because they're always so good i love them so i'm not actually much of a christmas person but i do find like every year we queue up all of the like I, I, I am definitely into British comedies and almost every one of them has at least two or three sort of classic Christmas episodes. So, um, and Doctor Who too. And like, there's just a whole bunch that I have mostly on DVD and, and other places. And it is kind of fun to not watch those during the year and then have the special time of year when you do let yourself watch them. Yeah, I am. Um, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm the opposite. I love the Christmas movie. I like Christmas and I love the Christmas movies. So that's my rewatch. Um, there's, I don't, this, normally I like murder mystery, but like lighthearted ones, like the Ms. Marple ones or Miss Fisher's murder mystery. Mm. Um, but I'm not feeling it this year. Um, so I'm, I'm not really planning on a rewatch of any sort of series, um, but I am, I've got my list of Christmas movies to watch. And I like, every time we watch one, I'm just, cross it off um everything from you know uh the new stuff I watched Jingle Jangle the other night um and then of course you know White Christmas and the Muppets Christmas Carol is a definite Mm -hmm. must Mm -hmm. every year I I know several people who have that high on their list oh yeah that's top of top of my list oh yeah I think that I I maintain that Muppets Christmas Carol is possibly the best filmed adaptation of the Christmas Carol and (laughs) that Michael Caine is the best Scrooge on film which is remarkable because again he is Mm -hmm. acting against Muppets he is providing an Oscar winning performance of Scrooge and he is mostly directing his lines towards like Kermit. Now I love the Muppets, so I don't, I don't mean to de- degrade them. I'm just saying the quality of acting is but. so high. <laughs> it's excellent. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So I, I realize like the more I like the movie, the more I, I try to watch it closer to Christmas. <laughs> so like this, let's call it the stupider stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> like say, um, Christmas Prince or <laughs> one National of those Lampoon's things. Christmas Vacation. Yeah. That one, yeah, I actually haven't gotten to that one yet. That's probably going to be sometime this week. Somewhere in the middle. Right? The middle <laughs> yeah, one. somewhere in the middle. Yeah, my, yeah, the quality goes up the closer to Christmas. <laughs> oh, I like that. I like that. That's a good way to do it. Yeah. Like, uh, it's like also, an advent I would say, what? It's like an advent calendar. Like the things get better the closer you get to the, <laughs> the, yeah. calendar, and the advent calendar. So it, it applies to the also, I'd say the more Christmassy, because for me, it doesn't just have to be Christmas-like. It just has to be kind of like a warm and, mm-hmm. I don't know, often British, but not necessarily. So I recently watched the Emma that was made in March. I, I had originally wanted to go see that in theaters. <laughs> that was a trip not make it. And then yeah. stuff happened. I mean, yeah. yeah, March. Um, but it's on... I don't Hulu or Amazon Prime or something now. So I watched that to kind of like open up the cozy winter stuff, even though it takes place in the summer, but mm. it was still cozy. Um, and Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day, which is, I, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's cozy. It's warm. Mm, yeah. yeah. Um, it's such a beautiful movie. Uh, so yeah, so I, I eased into the season with those. <laughs> it's always it's good to ease to ease yourself in. I will say on the on the 
the stupid Christmas things, the bad, the bad Christmas things. Uh, my roommate and I have watched uh, Princess Switch, Princess Switch Two, Switch again. I haven't again. seen that one yet. Uh, a Night Before Christmas, The Christmas oh, Prince, so and Christmas Prince Two Royal Wedding. We are saving the third one with the baby. Yeah, we're waiting for that one for a few days. We're waiting for the Christmas Prince Three Royal Baby, uh, and it's just—it's really enjoyable. They're so silly. They're so silly. The <laughs> I just a night before Christmas is quite possibly like <laughs> I don't know that they had ever done it. They were like, "What is the medieval times like?" It's probably exactly like medieval times. The restaurant. Yeah. The restaurant. <laughs> they have done zero research into like actual things that would exist. For instance, there's Christmas trees in the the medieval night is like, oh, how we decorate our Christmas tree. And it's like, you didn't do that in England in 13 whatever. That's not a thing that happened. But sure, sure, we're going to your Christmas tree. There's uh, actually been a really funny um thread going around this week online about um parents having their kids watch their favorite Christmas movies. Well, I guess that happens all the time, but now you can talk about it on social media. Um, and some of the reactions have been pretty funny um, because, you know, little kids watching the kinds of movies that you're talking about. Um, and my favorite was the parent who was like, who made um, his kids watch Home, Home Alone 1 and 2. And the kid's reaction was like, this movie is stupid. Why doesn't he just call his parents on the phone <laughs> and get saved? <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. Because of course this kid is growing up with completely different expectations. But yeah, I, I don't know. It's I'll say it's I, I had a friend who just showed her kids, um, I think it was back in November, but she showed them Die Hard for the first time. Whether or not you think it's a Christmas movie, that's the a Christmas whole different movie, argument. Yeah. But she showed them, and she has two um, teenagers. And she showed them Die Hard, and they were all like, because they, again, it was like, they were like, well, but like cell phones. Cell phones. <laughs> like cell phones would solve all this. And like, there's this whole, there's just a couple scenes where they're like, that's, that's not a, good idea like why are why why are we not being logical about this like this just doesn't make sense and apparently they just like tore the whole movie like apart watching it because they were just and then there were like a couple parts where they're like okay that was kind of cool and like they literally didn't believe her it was alan rickman because they grew up with him as snape as, oh in harry and potter like, yeah and so they like did not believe her that it, it was alan rickman <laughs> like they were like there is no way that is alan rickman and she's like it is though it's alan it's alan rickman I think even something like Elf is like 20 years old now, you know, and I know. And it seems like to me just like still such a new Christmas mm, movie. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's yeah. newer than like Home Alone and Muppets and, you know, obviously like White Christmas and things like that. So like, yeah. like all the things that we grew up that already existed, like it came about. Since... Christmas in Connecticut and stuff. Yeah. I have this big I love memory. Christmas in Connecticut. <laughs> you, you guys are too young, but I'm trying to remember. Like when I was growing up, because before like even VHS, um, on TV there was always um, The Wizard of Oz. Mm -hmm. was like, and I'm trying to remember whether it was Thanksgiving Eve or Christmas Eve, but it was like, it was one of the two big holidays that like oh, everybody in the country put their kids in front of the television to watch. When um, I was growing up, it was in, I think in February that they, it was like one random night in February that they would oh, play okay. The Wizard of Oz. This, I just remember because my, my cousins would always come over, you know, we'd have a big family celebration and you'd get to see cousins and stuff like that. And we would get plunked in front of the television and we would be amused for, you know, whatever it took, many, three hours. Many hours, yeah. It was the original um, long movie. So as not to annoy the adults during their holiday celebration. Yeah. I know that when, when I was a kid, this is a, a memory that I remember, we always had, like Home Alone was always on television on Thanksgiving. And we always went to my grandparents, um, my dad grew up on a farm. So my grandparents still lived on the farm and we had Thanksgiving there every year. And we would go and we only ever got to see the first like half because we had to leave. Because <laughs> 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 so 
so I saw the first half of Home Alone on television so many times. And then I was like, well, we have to go home now. So I'm not going to see the end. Though I had seen the whole thing. So it wasn't like, didn't know. Yeah, it wasn't like you only saw the, the beginning over and over again and had no idea how it ended. Yeah, that would that would be very bad to be like, does anyone ever save this child? Does he ever <laughs> get saved? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. We do. I will say my family does watch Die Hard every Christmas. We are are a Die Hard is a Christmas. I'll say one one of my roommates, um, I had never actually seen Die Hard until after she moved in and then she she makes us watch it. Not every Christmas, like every other-ish Christmas. Um, I will confess to actually not having ever seen it yet. Yeah, I I, I, only saw it last year, I think. Yeah, it was only, I don't think it was last year because last year was weird because we were in the midst of like moving and buying, buying the house, but I think it was the year before that that we watched and I, I mean, I have to admit, I had slightly the same reaction that the teenagers did of like, I don't entirely get this movie. Like, there's, because it, it was one of those movies that I think, like, it's one of those very much cult classic in a lot of ways movies now. But like, it, it's not necessarily one of those movies that if you didn't love it growing up, that you, like, I enjoyed it, but I'm like, not gung ho to watch it again because like, I didn't grow up like with this as part of like the family thing. Yeah, I don't even know if any of the rest of my family, my brother, I'm sure has because he watches a lot of TV. So if nothing else, he's caught it on TV. I would not be surprised. My mom, I can guarantee, has never seen it, and my dad, I I could could go either way with my dad. I'll have to ask him at some point. Yeah, I uh, I feel the same way about a Christmas story. Um, I did not see that until I was an adult, um, and I think that's the kind of movie you have to watch as a kid in order to love. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was just, just like, this is... I yeah, I, I watched it, I think, in college, because I think one, a couple of my friends in college had grown up watching it every year. So they're like, we have to watch it before... When I told them we hadn't, I had never seen it. They were like, we have to watch it, you know, before we go home for Christmas. And um, so I saw it in college and was like, okay, this I kid's really dumb. I think some of those other, like, the classic TV ones, like the Charlie Brown Christmas and Frosty the Snowman was just... Oh, yeah. Like, oh, that was awful, but I watched it every year, and the original Grinch, and, you know. I say, my older cousins were really into the um, the Frosty and, and the Heat Miser and all those. <laughs> the like, they were, my, my older, my, my older cousin, and when I say older, I mean I'm closer in age to most of their kids than I am to them, like, 20 year older, you know, somewhere between, like, 10 and 20 years older cousins. They were super, super into those, but, like, we never really, even, mm-hmm. like, I, I don't get them when I watch them, like. Yeah. They're weird. Very, very weird. There's Some been people. a lot of stuff like that. Not not Christmassy things, but things that I loved as a child. And you go back and watch them again and you're like, what was I thinking? No. There's lots of things that you don't want to go back to. <laughs> you're yeah. like, just keep that perfect memory. You alive. can't go home again, they say. Right? right. I will say I had not seen Home Alone since I was a kid for a very long time. And then last year it was on Disney Plus. And while I was home for Christmas, we my family was like what are we gonna watch and we put on home alone and i was like this movie is good (laughs) i i enjoy home alone but i have to admit i can't resist being like every time that somebody in that movie would actually be dead in real life being like they're dead they're dead again they're dead for the 15th time very very dead so dead. (laughs) the second movie is even worse than the first one it's so like Oh, but I love it. I love, I love those movies. They're, yeah. they're among I, I, my favorite. I don't know if we own the first one, but I did just stumble upon. We do own the second one. I must. I probably found it at Target for like three bucks and was like, "Yes, perfect." Um, and I like the second one just because I'm way more familiar with New York City, having grown up in upstate New York, than I am with. I've been to Chicago since, but I ha- did not go to Chicago until I was an adult. Um, I'd never been to Chicago until I was an adult, so like, I really like the New York City one with. My my mom like cries every time she sees it with the Rockefeller tree and the whole thing at the end. And she, and because both parent and New York person. Um, And I will say, speaking of Disney plus um, I, and being a star Wars fan that I am, um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the infamous Disney star Wars holiday special, which is seventies, not worth watching. Do not watch it. Don't, unless you are honestly drinking heavily, do not go out. (laughs) However, Lego this year has done a new um, holiday, Star Wars holiday special on Disney Plus, and it is hilarious. It's really well done. They don't obviously celebrate Christmas. It's it's Life Day is their thing. 
Um, but it's really, really cute. It's got a really good sense of humor. Um, it captures the characters really well. And honestly, you don't really need it. Even if you only know like the original trilogy, it's still really fun because basically there's this whole funky time travel thing that happens and it's hilarious. And the, the roommates and I watched it thinking that we were like, okay, well, Lego does clever stuff. So like, it won't be bad. And we're like, oh God, we have to like watch it again. Like we, it was, it was shockingly good. So we're just going to pretend the one in the seventies never happened. And now it's just the Lego one. <laughs> but I but. demand B. Arthur in the Star Wars universe. I, I know. That, <laughs> that is probably the only, like, the only part that anybody wants to remember of that. <sighs> Are you um, telling me that the first half all in Wookiee isn't enough for you, Casey? <laughs> I mean, I, I have definitely watched it because it, it, it is on YouTube. You can find the whole thing on YouTube. Um, and if you really want to be a completionist, you probably should watch it. However, it is, I mean. It's atrocious. Yeah, it's just really, really, it's it's so bad. It's not even hilariously bad. It is just oh, it's hilariously bad. Out it's bad. horrible. <laughs> like, it is just like. I think I'm pretty sure when I watched it, I sat most of the time just like <laughs> staring at my screen, like not even laughing, just like. But you still watch the whole thing. I did because they I also a... they do a riff tracks of it as well, which might make it a little more palatable. Yes, mm. sometimes yeah. that's how to get through things. That's like how one could watch Santa Claus Conquers the Martians, as you watch the um, you watch the Mystery Science Theater version. Mm -hmm. I did watch that. Yes, yeah. or Cats. Yes, or just, or just watch with someone that you will let you talk through it and make fun of it the whole time. The whole time, yeah. 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 It takes all kinds. I will, I have to, I don't, I have to check if the real version is on Disney+. Plus. I don't think it is. But another thing that I always loved as a kid was a Muppet, fam a Muppet Family Christmas. Christmas, yeah. Where all of the Muppets, so it's the Muppets, the Muppets from Sesame Street and the Fraggles all join up for Christmas and they have the, they have a Christmas special. Um, there's a DVD version that is cut down because they didn't have the music rights to everything. Mm. So some of the songs are not in it, which is sad. Um, you can find the like whole thing on YouTube. They don't, it, it's usually around. And yeah. And I, as a kid, I loved it because I was Muppet crazy. I adored the Muppets. Uh, and so they, that's that's one. But yes, if you ever wanted to see like Big Bird and the Fraggles in the same place, that's how you do it. They'll go to Fozzie Bear's mom for Christmas. I, it rings like fate bells. Like I probably saw it when I was little, but I haven't seen it. In it. I'll have to. I'll nah. Muppet, the Muppets were interesting because they have a lot of Christmas specials because they didn't re-air. They did re-air them, but they also just made new ones. So like they, it's like you can remember having a Muppet Christmas special, but they're, they're, they're different. Like I Christmas feel like together. a lot of them are blending in my head. Yeah. yeah. And they, and, and um, Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas, which is another favorite of mine. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I rewatched this last year. There's one where it has like Robert Downey Jr. as like an eccentric millionaire and it's about Christmas trees and it like they keep like cutting down the top of the Christmas tree because it's too tall and so it goes like he has a giant Christmas tree and then there's one in like the servants hall and they cut it down and then like the mice have it and then it's like in a birdhouse that's well uh, I can't remember the name of that one but it was on Disney plus and it's like it's just like cute it's like a half hour long but yeah so what I think what we're saying is there's a lot of things to watch <laughs> and as long as you so you have the association it doesn't matter what that thing is whatever brings as, as amanda was saying whatever makes you feel warm and fuzzy inside go for it yeah and it kind of makes you wish for a really big snowstorm Even yeah though was... a lot of us are home anyway but like, <laughs> there's there's something about knowing that the whole world is stuck inside that makes you also want to like just curl up with something that's cozy mm -hmm. yeah um actually uh, this weekend when it was raining and supposed to turn into snow it was like the first time i was able to sleep in and um artemis went down for a nap soon after i woke up so i had like a stretch of time i could have my <laughs> my french i could make french toast and eat it in front of um the movie downton abbey another cozy thing oh, yeah. That yes. this year. <laughs> and i was like this is what i've been waiting for all year <laughs> oh 
that sounds that sounds ideal. I love that. I love that for mm-hmm. yeah. And you're gonna have well, you don't this year. She's too young, but you're gonna have the fun experience of introducing all of these things to your child, so you can yeah. tell us. All Eventually, she yep. he too can make fun of Home Alone. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to hear all of those stories. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. I think on that note, we've had a lovely conversation. So I will, we will sign off. We will be back in the new year, uh, back here talking about 2021. 21. So soon. Remember, remember when that was so far in the future? I know. They made movies about it. Remember when it was March and now it's going to be March again? And I don't think that a whole year has passed. That's not nope. fair. Nope. nope. Well, this was fun. Yes. yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you all, all right. for coming. Okay. Yeah. Bye, everyone. <laughs>